Hey there, friends! Quick note before I give you an even quicker update on why this video was delayed. If you want to jump straight to the section that you're looking for, uh, there are links in the description to do exactly that. Though there is some information I'm going to share with you in a second that you might want to consider before making your final decision. Cool! So, if you caught my top 11 reasons why I use Clip Studio video, you probably remember hearing me say this. Spoilers, I'm about to drop a video in the next few days on how to make your own custom macro keyboard for Clip Studio Paint, or really any other piece of software that you'd want a custom macro keyboard for, so be on the lookout for that! <laughs> so, it's a month later, and there are some reasons why that didn't come to fruition. One theory is that I started playing Animal Crossing New Horizons, and I think that I might have actually time-traveled IRL. And then, there's the real reason. Procrastination! Um. <sighs> Actually, first, I tried to get Clip Studio to sponsor this video after seeing that they will drop some sweet dosh on their tutorial creators. So after submitting my proposal through their website and waiting for close to two weeks, and then sending a follow-up email being like, uh... They were like, oh, yeah, uh, here, one second, uh, let me look, let me look. Oh, yeah, no? No. Which I'm guessing has less to do with the fact that in my last video I said things like, F*** them. Hey, f*** off, buddy. I'd up their Holes. and more to do with the fact that this exists. Clip Studio's own proprietary piece of hardware, the TabMate controller. And I was essentially proposing, hey, Celsus, uh, do you want to pay me $900 to show people how to make something cheaper and better? So, uh, nice play, Clip Studio. Too bad I'm gonna do it anyways. Oh yeah, the second reason this took so long is because I've also been working on giving you guys three options now. <gasps> One for a physical keyboard like this, made out of an inexpensive Bluetooth number pad. One that utilizes a Bluetooth gamepad, such as a PS4 controller or a Switch Pro controller or one of the cute little Joy-Cons. And a third version that utilizes your existing smartphone or tablet. All of them have their own set of perks and drawbacks, and I guess before I start explaining how to make them, I'll let you know what those are. So, with the keyboard, perks are, it's so cute! Especially with the icons that I made for it, I'm sure that if I could leave the house, I would get lots of compliments on it. I'm quite confident in this belief! Plus, it has physical keys that you can feel with your fingers while your eyes are on your screen. It has more keys than any of the other options, and it is easily the most customizable option for Windows users. Another very important feature is you can press and hold the keys on this, which I find to be very important. It is also probably the only version that works with iPad. The cons to this are, you probably don't have one just lying around, so you're gonna have to buy one. The initial build and setup can be mildly time consuming, but worth it. Also, one of the ways that this can work for Windows users that gives you additional customization options is by running a piece of software that will temporarily remap your physical number pad keys to the hotkeys of the software and other things, which can be kind of annoying if you forget to suspend or quit the tray application, especially if you have your arrow keys remapped like I also, there is the possibility of having to deal with a number pad that has one of those zero zero buttons or triple zero buttons on it and having to work around that. We'll get into that later. Next up, the controller. Perks are, you probably just have one laying around. It fits comfortably in your hand, and if you bring it with you to draw, you always have a controller to game on while you're on the go. It allows press and holding keys. It also allows key binding to be software specific, so you could use it with different software and have it automatically change when that software starts. The cons to the controller are, the buttons aren't always easily accessible while drawing. It is the bulkiest option and takes up the most space in your bag. No labeled buttons, so less cute. And it has the least available buttons. And lastly, with the cell phone tablet option, perks. You probably got one! It's probably always on your person. You can easily arrange all of the keys on the screen. Uh, it can use my icons, so it's pretty cute. And there are free options available, though I haven't really tested them out yet. Cons. There are no physical keys, which means it's much harder to know which keys you're pressing when you're not looking at it, especially if there's a lot of them. There's also no press and hold option for these buttons. Instead, with these, you have to set a key press time for each button that you plan on using, which isn't super convenient, though I do have it already set up for you. And unless you're using the app on a tablet, the buttons are small. All right, so now that you know the perks of these, let's get this started, shall we? Okay, I'm actually going to start off showing you how to make your gaming controller into a super cool macro art controller since it takes the least amount of time to explain. To do this, you will need a USB or Bluetooth gamepad and a $7 piece of Windows software called Joy2Key. 
uh, which I have included a link to in the video description. Essentially, what Joy the Key does is remap your existing controller's buttons and pads and analog stick directions to represent keyboard button presses. Uh, once you launch the software and tell it which controller to use, you can essentially press a button on the controller and it will highlight which button you pressed in the software. Then you just double click that and tell it what you want the button to do. Uh, something to consider, you're probably gonna be using this controller one-handed most of the time. So I would suggest setting it up so that the buttons that you have the easiest one-handed access to are your most used buttons in Clip Studio. Uh, I think when I was using my controller, I had it set up so that I could undo with the left D-pad and I set the other directions to my most used tools, such as the eraser, the pen, and the brush. Uh, L1 was the eyedropper and I think I had L2 set to the move hand because my monitor didn't accept finger touch input at that point in time. I think I might have also set my analog stick up and down to change the brush size, but I think I remembered having something on the left and right and then removing it because I was pressing stuff all the time. Oh yeah, I do remember having the start button set to save and just remembering that it feels really nice and like final pressing start to save. And a good reminder for you to get lost in that sauce. Once you get everything set up and all your buttons configured, you're done. Congrats, woo, hooray. Go enjoy your cyberpunk artist lifestyle. Oh yeah, and drop a comment or a like or whatever, this is YouTube. Next up, I'm gonna explain how to do the cell phone tablet method. Now, this one is super easy because I pretty much did it all for you already. Essentially, all you gotta do is download a copy of Touch Portal, link in the description, which is an app usually used to turn your phone into one of those Twitch stream decks. I know Elgato also sells an app to do this as well, uh, but this one is cheaper. Uh, there's also a freeware option that I didn't go with because I was willing to shell out a couple of bucks for Touch Portal because it looks better and I'm just kind of a sucker for aesthetics. I also did this because it allows you to use GIFs for buttons and I spent an entire day animating all of my icons so I could make it look super cute. And then once I put them all in there, the app slowed down to a crawl because there was like 30 to 40 animated GIFs going at once. And it did not like that very much, but we don't talk about that. But yeah, once you've downloaded the computer and mobile components to Touch Portal, you should essentially just be able to import the file that I've included in the description and boop, you're done. Mostly, remember before when I said that this doesn't support the press and hold function? You might find that I set the key press time parameter too long or short for your liking, so you're just gonna have to go into the keys setting on the desktop application and change those settings as you see fit. All right, hold the phone. Um, I think I might have forgotten to explain something to y'all real quick. Say I have something set up in here that you don't have in your version of Clip Studio, so a hotkey for turning your stabilization up. If you click it, you'll see that my keyboard press is set to number pad nine. So if you go into your copy of Clip Studio, go File, Shortcut Settings, you're going to need to create that hotkey. So depending on what you're trying to change uh, and where it is as far as the setting area, it's not in the main menu, it's not in File Edit or any of those. This is in Options and Tool Property Palette. You'll scroll down and you'll find Reduce stabilizer and increase stabilizer. You can see that I already set mine to number pad nine. Uh, if you need to change it, literally just double click it and hit the button that you want to change it to. So number pad eight, number pad nine. Okay, uh, now back to your video. Bye. Woo, two down, one to go. All right, here we are. It's finally here. To make the number pad based macro keyboard, you are going to need a few things. A Bluetooth number pad, a paper printout of the icons that you plan on using, scissors or an X-Acto knife, some Mod Podge and a paintbrush. I would also snag a glue stick as it makes one of these steps way easier. So if you're on Windows and don't want to change the hotkey mapping in Clip Studio, you're also gonna want a copy of Auto Hotkey. I have a link to that software in the description. As far as the number pad goes, this is the one that I got off of Amazon. I've got a link in the video description if you wanna check it out as well and follow along using that. Author's note, the first time I did this, I purchased a Bluetooth number pad that had the zero zero or double zero button. You might also see some with a triple zero when you're looking through keyboard options. I would suggest against these as those keys essentially just send the same zero key signal except multiple times. There is a workaround for this, but save yourself the hassle if you can, trust me. You can also find a link in the video description containing the icons that I'm using on my macro keyboard. And to give you a little rundown on what those are, let's take a look at my keyboard. 
keyboard. So for starters, on my home row, you're gonna see that I have the undo and redo button and the brush size up and down. Then above that, I have all of my normal tools laid out. My pencil, spatula, eraser, brush, airbrush, and fill tool. Uh, above that, I also have the tab button, which in Clip Studio Paint hides all the menus. Next to that, I have a key bound to the Windows tab or Alt tab option that switches the active window to the previously used application. And next to that, I have a button that will pull up my on-screen keyboard. Over here on the right side, you will see that I have my eyedropper tool, my resize tool, the hand tool, the move tool, cut and paste. I've got a little lasso, select all, add a new layer, add a new vector layer. This brings up my line correction tool, and this is my shift button, which if you're using a brush in Clip Studio and hold the shift button, it will make straight lines every time, so that's a little ruler. You might be wondering what these two are. This little brain is the button that I have set to turn my stabilization up, and I thought the only thing opposite of a human brain is, um, well, whatever this thing is. So yes, that is stabilization up and down. Next to that, you will see the buttons that toggle my layer visibility. Above that are three buttons to navigate between keyframes and add keyframes if I'm working on animation. And then I've got save, save as, and my enter button. So yeah, if you want to customize your own icons or want to make your own page, and you don't want to have to draw a bunch of little teeny icons, you can go to websites like Flat Icon or Icons 8 to find a bunch of free icons for you to use. So, first things first, what you're gonna wanna do is cut out all of those icons. This is a little time consuming, as you can see. Next, you're gonna wanna figure out what keys are most important for you to have on your macro keyboard. If you don't do animation, you might not need my navigate and add keyframe buttons or whatever. Then you're gonna wanna arrange those keys on your keyboard, really thinking about how you wanna organize them and also what keys are most important to have easy access to. Also, think about which keys you're gonna be able to use with your device. Like, if you're on an iPad, you're probably not gonna wanna use some of the icons that I made for my Windows shortcuts or whatever. I really urge you to take your time with this step though, since you aren't gonna wanna have to change them later. Uh, really think about what you want to have access to, also how you plan on holding your keyboard. Since we're covering up the existing buttons on this, remember that you don't have to use the normal orientation. My first macro keyboard, I actually used the number pad sideways so I could organize my buttons in long horizontal rows because it just made more sense to me. Once you think you've got your keys figured out, you're gonna wanna use your glue stick to stick them down to the keys so they don't slide around when you're applying your Mod Podge. And then finally, you're gonna wanna use your paintbrush and apply the Mod Podge over the entire top surface of each of your keys to seal them to the keyboard forever. I personally just applied a very light glaze over my keys because my biggest worry during this step was accidentally spilling some Mod Podge in between the cracks of the keys and having to deal with the keys that stick, which I know would have made me want to die or throw it away. Then when you're done, let it dry. Once the Mod Podge is dry, hooray, the hardest part is over. And look at your cute little keyboard. Cherish it. It is your new child. Now we gotta get it set up to work. This part is gonna be different depending on how much effort you really wanna put into it. Uh, Cause with Clip Studio, you could essentially go in right now and rebind all the hotkeys that you wanna use to the existing numbers and buttons on your keypad. People with Apple products are gonna wanna do this anyways as you really have no choice. But us Windows folk get options as always. Wink. So Windows users, if you want to, you can download a copy of Auto Hotkey from their website. What does Auto Hotkey do? It allows you to use some very simple scripting to rebind all of those keys to the specific keystrokes that Clip Studio usually uses. You can also get it to do just about anything if you're willing to learn its coding language. But for what we're doing, the coding is super simple. First, install Auto Hotkey. Once it's installed, right click on an empty spot on your desktop, find new in the menu, then Auto Hotkey script. Give your script a name. I'm gonna call mine Cool Butts. Now find the file on your desktop and right click it and click Edit Script. A window should open up, probably in Notepad. If so, woo, you did it! Once inside this window, you're gonna wanna tell Auto Hotkey what to do with the keys on your keyboard. It will essentially work like this. The name of the key that you wanna change, colon, colon, what you wanna change it to. If you launch the auto hotkey application that you find in your start menu, it will open up a reference menu that contains all the exact names of all keys on your keyboard as they pertain to the software. So say you wanna change the clear button on your number pad to instead be the E key, it would look like number pad clear, colon, colon, E. Now, say you wanna change a key to instead send a combination of multiple keys, like say, control Z, undo. You're going to wanna input key name, colon, colon, 
send arrow up bracket thingy. What is that? Send Z. Uh, if you have one of the number pads with the double zero key, there is a tiny bit of code that you can use to utilize those keys, which pretty much tells the software if the zero key is pressed this many times within this time limit, do this. And if not, just send the zero key. Uh, it adds a little bit of delay to using the zero, double zero, triple zero keys. It also means that those keys shouldn't be used for any key that you're gonna have to press multiple times or press and hold. So maybe have it set to something like a utility as opposed to like a tool or something like that. Now, once you do this for all keys on your keyboard, your document might look like this. Cool, save the document, then, Right click that .ahk file that you just created and click compile script. Once that is done, it will create an executable program that you can launch and voila, you're done. We did it, we got there, woo, woo hoo hoo. You can now move it off your desktop and store it wherever you want, say in my documents. And for ease of use, you could create a desktop shortcut or pin it to your taskbar or include it in your Windows startup processes. But first, congratulate yourself on a job well done. You did it and I'm proud of you. Now go make some art, you dummy. <sighs> so yeah, you've done it. I uh, hope this video helped you out. And if you liked this, uh, prove it, idiot. Go drop a like and a comment. And if you're truly not a coward, go and drop the people's elbow on that subscribe, baby. Truly though, I hope that this shit helps you streamline your workflow as it has mine. Uh, oh, and if you do end up making a keyboard, maybe consider sending me a video or a photo of yours. And maybe I'll show it in one of my upcoming videos. I don't know. I'm not making any promises anymore. Thanks again for watching. I really, really appreciate you. Thank you, thank you. Oh my God, bye. I was just over here. I'm, I'm just fucking with you.